Damn. What's going on everybody? Bake Almighty today with another sick project with an even sicker guest. This is somebody that I've looked up to for years. Anytime I need inspiration, I check out his page. We got my homie Jay from Dake & Co. What's up dude, you nailed that one. Yeah, we, we've looked up to you as well for a long time. We've always had your videos playing around the office as well. You know, we're always looking at that inspiration from you. So what'd you drag me out here for? Dude, it's an honor to have you here, but I did drag you here for several different reasons, but the main one is to do this video. So. We've done a lot of stuff in the past. We've taken apart a lot of different shoes. So one thing that we're gonna be doing today is a Frankenstein build. Yeah, so we've, we've taken apart hundreds of shoes over the years. With all these shoes, you know, very early on, we started realizing we can't just throw these things away. Yeah. They have value at some point. We collected you know? a boneyard, dude. Exactly. Between your stuff and my stuff, we yeah. have stuff for days. There's all kinds of stuff that we can make all kinds of stuff out of. You see people nowadays making bags and wallets and all kinds of stuff out of shoe parts, you know? Yeah. We figure why not use all these shoe parts that we have and make a shoe, an nondescript, just kind of Frankenstein shoe, and we'll just see how it, how it goes. Make go. something out of nothing. Yes. Recycle all the old stuff we use. We, used to have. we don't have to buy anything, nope. you know, environmental friendly, yep. I like it. No planning, just go. You ready? Yes. Let's do it. So Jake, I've never built a Frankenstein. What's first in this process? I've, for one, we'll just make note of this, is that I've never had any kind of training. Nobody's ever taught me how to do any of this stuff. I've never had a class. Um, I've just figured it out. And I know just from the looks of this, we're gonna get some some hate from anybody that is professionally trained at doing this particular thing. There's cobblers out there that when they tape, it looks absolutely perfect, straight, like, you know, really um, well balanced. For what we're doing, it's gonna work. You know, like it doesn't need to look pretty. This is just gonna give us the basic shape of the shoe. I'm well aware this is not the uh, professional taught way to do things. If you don't know how to do something and there's no shame in just trying your own way, first of all, because I didn't have any kind of teaching and I just got dirty. Everybody hits me up on DMs. If they ask how to do things, I just tell them just find your own way to do it. Learn from your mistakes and get dirty. Yeah, he didn't want to teach me when I asked him for something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I got into customizing shoes at early age. Um, my brother was really into shoes and he was 10 years older than me. He always had way better shoes than I did. So he was a big influence on me. And, you know, my mom was an artist. So at a young age, I would actually uh, draw shoes a lot. And then I got to like designing shoes. And then mom would like, take those drawings that I did and make multiple copies of them on a Xerox machine. And then that was kind of like my coloring book. So that was kind of how this all started. Yeah, we've done shoes for everybody from LeBron and D-Wade. We've done stuff for Post Malone, Bad Bunny, uh, Shawn Mendes, John Mayer, Matthew McConaughey. It, I forget, but there's a lot. Uh, Jay-Z, Puff Daddy. Um, can you think of any more? I forget a lot, but there's a lot. So what are we doing this, bro? Yeah, so basically we're gonna use this shoe to take some measurements that will get us in the ballpark that we need to be in right. um, as far as making a low top shoe. Doesn't have to be exact. We're not making a Jordan 1 low. We're just making a low top shoe that will end up fitting on a Jordan 1 sole. And it, like I said, it doesn't have to be these exact measurements, but we are gonna get some measurements so we know that we're in the right ballpark. What if we did it a little bit higher than a Jordan 1 low? We could, it could be like a mid, you know? Yeah. Um, this is your world, you know? I'm just an oyster in it. <laughs> I like that, sounds good. We're making a mid then. Yeah, move this insole kind of a little bit out of the way. I think the insole is about a quarter of an inch right. tall. So at that, you know, we'll end up being three inches. Yeah. So three inches from the bottom of this right here, will give us the same height as a low top gotcha. Jordan 1. So if you bump it to a mid, what is that? Like a three and a half? Well, or a yeah, I mean, I'd say, yeah, let's do a three and a half, why not? So right now what we're doing is kind of creating the skeleton for the shoe. Once it's all traced out, we'll cut it out and that'll be where we place all the parts for the sneaker. It doesn't look really pretty right now, but it will be soon. So there's our pattern for our left upper. From here, what we're gonna do is kind of lay it out flat. 
Uh, but then we're gonna pull this expanded mesh. This is a, a what I like to call expanded mesh. It's a liner mesh and it's kind of uh, springy, but it's only a few mils thick. And this is what is used on like liners for like air masses, yeah. new balances and stuff like that. Now, one thing we wanna do though is around this bottom edge, what I like to do is lay it out flat and give us just a one inch lasting allowance. Is that what you always do for your builds? About yeah, an about an inch is all you need. So just kind of a couple of hash marks around it. And you'll be able to kind of connect the dots. After that, we'll trace the actual pattern and cut it out. And then to duplicate it for the other foot, we just flip the piece that we cut out. Does it matter what side we're working on? It doesn't. Um, again, another thing we're trying to really push here is there is no rules. There is no right or wrong way. And finding your own way is always, you know, the coolest part of this whole journey. So Jake just finished tracing the pattern using the tape that we just cut up. We're gonna peel it right now and cut it. As you can see on both sides, we left an extra inch. That's gonna help us during the lasting process. We need material that we can pull with the pliers. Now let's go ahead and remove the tape so we can cut. We finally got something to work with. It may not look like much right now, but once we put all the parts on this piece and wrap it back together, we'll put it on the last and it'll give it the shape of the shoe. We still have a lot of work before we get there. What's next, Jake? Yeah, I think the next thing is that we just kind of start figuring out all these pieces that we got. Time to go here. in the boneyard? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Damn. Bro, what the f There's a lot more where that came from. Dude, you're right. You stay there, I got some more stuff. Check this out, Jake. Back full of tongue tags, tabs, swooshes, plastic hardware, off-white parts, Jordan 2 soles, insoles, possibly donor soles. And if this is enough, we have a whole nother box over there, bro. So what you think? It's cute. Yeah, I think we need a bigger table. All right, we have too much to play with. I guess we'll just start eliminating stuff. Yeah, so just you're just gonna look around, see if anything, you know, tickles your fancy, basically, and see how you can incorporate it. All right, yeah. sounds good. Huh? Bro, we're not making a loser shoe. <laughs> I like that piece. That's clean. We need some animals print. Yeah. What's this? That was part of, that's a shower curtain, actually. Part of a shower curtain. I used that on the off-white dunks. I did like two years before off-white dunks. I do remember those. You got creative with it, huh? Yeah. So yeah. Just you gotta do. I'll, I'll use anything from shower curtains to kids' folders to tablecloths, whatever you gotta do to get the right material. Puffy swish? Maybe. Yellow swish? Maybe. Gold swish? It's a maybe. Red swish? Possibly. You got some good stuff over here, bro. Hey. You're hoarding all the good stuff. <laughs> over here working with just tongues. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so we have a few things laid down here. Uh, we're at a good spot to use some spray glue. Um, the spray glue is gonna be used just to temporarily hold down some of these panels. Jake, so for the audience, not me, because I know this stuff, yeah, yeah. what's next? Why are you spraying glue? Yeah, so basically we just wanna hold this, uh, some of these areas down. So I kinda got a few things I like, you know, uh, where they're headed here. So I wanna hold them in place. That way they don't get lost in the shovel. So I'll just pick one of them. So I'll pick this piece here. I kind of have it, you know, in a basic area where I want it. So what you're doing right now is just kind of laying down the foundation still, right? Yeah, still we can always peel it, move it, you know, but this is this will at least hold it down to, to where we can start adding on top of that and it not all move. But it's just a temporary tack. Stumped. All right, dude, I think we made some good progress. I'm cooked. You wanna come back tomorrow with some fresh brains and knock this out? Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. 
freak. So we're back, you guys. This morning, we spent some time putting some more stuff onto these panels. Jake's done a good job with his. He had to come in and help me with mine. I was kind of falling behind. It's looking good, though. What do you think? I love it. It's crazy. It doesn't look like anything I've ever seen before. Yeah, a lot of different colors, a lot of different elements. We got a couple swooshes laid down. One of my favorite panels is the toe box, but it's on there right now. So we use some spray glue to glue it onto the panel. It's just temporary, it's just so we can move stuff around. Right now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and start putting stuff together. Before we start sewing real quick, I'm gonna be using red thread for this panel. We have a bunch of different colored threads, a bunch of different colored panels, so it only makes sense. For this, we're gonna stay in the lines. All of these panels already have holes, they just follow the lines. Yeah, so we're making a, a pattern right now for this uh, puffy swoosh. It'll be kind of debossed and uh, come, it'll come from behind the, it's underneath that 3M panel. So we're gonna cut a hole to let that swoosh come out of, and then we'll sew around the perimeter of it. It'll, it should be a cool effect and it's kind of a backward, you know, kind of nod to Travis, that backward swoosh on the medial side. We're here at the sewing machine, kind of, you know, starting to actually nail down some of these pieces. Um, we have uh, all kinds of stuff on this shoe. We have uh, this purple area here is actually an Air Force One tongue. Um, these blue areas here are actually pieces from a toe box on a dunk, a vamp on a dunk. This green is actually uh, from a swoosh. Um, we have some Safari print on here. We have some 3M from a Jordan 5 tongue. We have a little kind of a lace stay area from an Air Max One. This toe box area we're utilizing is a piece from a uh, footscape, like a, a woven footscape motion, I think. We have dub zeros. Uh, we have a kind of a reverse swoosh on the, this medial side that's uh, kind of a puffy swoosh from a uh, Air Max One. And that's surrounded by a tongue from a Five Lab 3 uh, that we were using for a side panel. So yeah, so we got all kinds of stuff on here. Um, and again, this is not a concept that I came up with. This is something that an artist actually overseas named Helen Kirkham, um, from what I know, she developed, developed that. For what I, of this style, from what I know, she developed, uh, you know, this, this kind of uh, patchwork, um, utilizing scraps from torn apart shoes. I know she's really big into recycling, so she does a lot of, uh, recycled shoes, used shoes uh, that are repurposed and, and made into to new pieces of art. So um, I definitely don't want to take credit for, you know, the whole uh, idea because she definitely was a huge inspiration for this. I just kind of put my own spit on it. So far, so good. It's starting to look like a shoe. Think, what do you think? I like it. It kind of has this like Odell Beckham, was it the 720 yeah. vibes? We were talking about that right now. I looked it up and it does have that vibe. It's pretty sick. So I'm not gonna show you just yet what it looks like on the last, but it's coming together. I still have more work to go. Dane told me this is from a sample sneaker. What shoe is it from? Yeah, it's from Travis Kelsey's, one of his PE cleats. That's pretty sick. So I'm definitely gonna use this material on this other side as well. Make it kind of symmetrical, add some more orange. Gotta go in and glue some of these parts down, add some white thread and orange. Yours looks almost done. What else do you have left? Yeah, this, this is uh, kind of where I'm at so far. Um, I need to add an eyelet, uh, a set of eyelets, something. I, I have something here picked out right here. This is actually a piece from uh, Masha's shoe. It's pretty cool. Yeah, so Mosh Runner's gonna probably end up on here. And then, uh, yeah, so after that, then the mud guard, and then we'll do some trimming in here. The mud guard we're gonna use. The mud guard's a sick piece. Yeah, from a, now, normally I wouldn't use like a mud guard for a mud guard on this project, but I think it, it's just too good to not use. Um, it's the pad of waves, so yeah. So we'll end up having that on there, and then we'll be able to bring the, the heel together. Um, once we bring the heel together, you kind of get an idea of, of how it's going to look. Yeah, I'm kind of getting there too. And then we'll yeah. figure out the back, right? Yeah, so then we'll figure out the back and then the tongues, and then uh, we'll call it a night. Yeah, and some of the companies that I've, I've worked for would be uh, Adidas, SneakerCon, Whataburger, uh, TNT and their Animal Kingdom show, Pepsi, Helm Boots, Nice Kicks, Xbox, Mountain Dew, 
Charlie Candy, uh, Eighth Wonder Brewery, Jason Dady Restaurants, Red Bull, Kill Colon Cancer Foundation, Rockefeller Records, Post Oak Motors, Doritos, New Balance, Cannabis Now, Jameson, Vayner Media with uh, Gary V, Jack Daniels, Ubeek, the AT&T Center, Green Lab, Corona, Modelo, Pacifico, Sprite, The Spurs, Slim Jim, um, Rejuvenator. <laughs> so here we are, day three. We got a lot of work ahead of us. We're gonna close up the back of these shoes, get the heel counters in, padding, collar, tongues. So I just finished the upper on mine, basically, uh, minus the interior and the tongue. It's good so far, man. I'm almost done with mine too. Got some more work to do on the back. It's really just details. We got these two switches laid down on this side. Um, we kind of figured that this Jumpman logo from Jordan 9 would kind of go cool on, on this side. So we still got to go in, sew all those pieces together. My upper still needs some work. I got two switches picked out. In my opinion, these are the best from the bunch besides that one over there. We're going to put these two I think on this side, one on top, one on bottom. On the opposite side, we got this um, Jumpman logo from the Jordan 9 that's gonna go right here. After that, we are gonna be making some custom back tabs. They're gonna be matching on both shoes, but we'll get into that in just a bit. So check that out, guys. That's how that's looking so far. Got the swoosh wrapped around. Real quick, I also was able to slip in this damn Nike tag from these old Cortezes. It's gonna be a nice touch once it's all done. Real quick, let's do some sewing. What do you think about this part, bro? I like it. It's like the final detail, I think, to cover up this missing piece. Yep. Lay down right there. It's unique. I like it. What do you think about? It covers the corners. I think there's a black and red part as well, see? Yeah. Kind of too plain? Too run of the mill. All right, let's go with the French blue Jordan 7 part then. After that, it's just the back panel, right? What are we thinking for that piece? Well, we have our custom back panel we're going to do, but before that, right. we got... Classic elephant print. Jordan 3 cement brand elephant print. So I'm guessing that'll go like right around there, yep. give or take. We still got to go in and cut out a custom panel piece using this material, but we'll do that in just a bit. We'll finish up the sewing, we'll finally clean up this mess, and start wrapping it up, right? Yeah. process. Make it smoother, right? Looks good though. Let's finish it up. All right, so we have our, our uppers basically finished here. Um, the last thing we got to do is a back tab. Now we kind of figured that we would put a back tab on these shoes. That way there's something on there that kind of commemorates like, you know, this project uh, kind of makes it uh, a uniform pair. They're two totally different shoes left to right, but we'll have the same back tabs. Same soles. Same soles and same tongue tags. That's right. So uh, this is what we're gonna make the, the uh, tongue tags and the back tabs out of. And then we got a graphic that we made that we'll end up airbrushing on there. Uh, we're gonna end up cutting the shape out of this. And we're also gonna pick some tongues. We got four tongues here. Um, that we've kind of narrowed it down to. We had a lot more, but we figured those are the best ones. Some of them were pretty out there, Jordan 5, 6s, yeah. all too much. We need something where you can put a tongue label on. We narrowed it down to these four. Now we gotta decide. Should we pick the tongues now? I think so. All yeah, right. might as well. So I know we were looking at black. It's you not know. bad. I like the orange in the back, but at the same time, I don't like the size in the back. <laughs> and plus it's black. It's a little boring compared to what I've been doing so far. So True. I might um, put this in the no pile. Let's see what yellow looks like in there. Yellow's cool on both. I don't, what do you think pops more on your shoe? I like shoe? yellow in mine. I think there is no yellow yours on the has shoe. a nice pop. 
I think you should go with the yellow. Okay. Well, what are you thinking? I like it. I like it. Why don't you take the yellow? Okay, what about these for yours? I don't know. So this one's from an off-white Air Max 90. Random Jordan 1. I don't know. It's... I think that's kind of boring. It's a little boring. It has a zigzag stitch. It's the only different I like element. the exposed uh, edge and the, and the like off-white kind of ivory. It might go good with the sole too, because the sole might good. be off-white, you know? So I don't hate this. I think that's our combo. We've done probably, uh, you know, some projects we do 300 pairs in one project. So you gotta think, we've done thousands of shoes a year for the last 10 plus years. You know, like, if you really kind of put it that way. Um, so picking a favorite is difficult. We did a shoe very early, or I did a shoe very early on for LeBron that he ended up wearing on the cover of Sports Illustrated Kids and all kinds of stuff. And that was very pivotal um, in my business. So that's definitely a favorite. We just got the liners sewn in. They're upside down. What you actually end up doing is flipping them inside uh, once they're sewn, kind of get that rolled edge. This liner came from some leftover stuff that Vic had. And uh, we also have a heel counter that we recycled from a pair of Jordan 1s. So we're still on that, uh, you know, zero waste, just using, you know, what we got uh, kind of theme. So uh, we have some padding here that we also have from a Jordan 1 and we patterned it uh, for a low, so we'll cut that out, glue that in, uh, we'll roll this edge right over that padding, glue it in, and uh, sew it in at the bottom. Uh, we'll trim up a tongue, put a tongue tag in it, sew that in, and then we can start lasting. Jake is trucking over there. The tongues are done. Now we're onto the sock liner of the left shoe. We got the sock liner material in place. We still gotta go in and add a nice clean stitch all around. Once that's done, we'll cut off the excess and flip the sock liner back. We're moving. I just finished up the sock liner, gave it back to Jake. He had this one ready to go for me. He got the tongue in place, added this extra panel. He just glued it. Now I have to go in and add some thread. We'll start with the black. Once we're done with that, we'll move on to the red up in the front. I'm basically done with the sewing. My upper is good to go. The next step is lasting. Real quick, I'm gonna grab some laces and start lacing it up because that's part of the process. So we're almost done here. We have our liner sewn on, our padding is stuck on the inside, and we have our heel counter all ready to go. So now we need to roll the interior in, glue it down. We can sew this tongue in, and then we can get to lasting. Last piece of stitching to go. We just gotta lay down the purple to lock in this tongue. Let's wrap it up. All right, guys, we got some uppers. We don't have a bunch of flat pieces anymore. We're done with the sewing. These look sick, dude. They came out really well. Colorful, funky, yeah. just all over the place. This is dope. Yeah. What's next? So now we gotta last. So, have you ever lasted a shoe from scratch? Done it with Hoop Fresh, done it with Max, done it with Tyler, but hands on by myself. You wanna try it? Yeah, dude. All right, sweet. Again, to go on with the theme of recycling and using what we have. We're reusing a, a, a lasting from, board. Yeah, from a Jordan 1. Yeah, so, and it's in your size, so it's perfect. So I already have this one nailed on. We have three nails holding it in place. Now I heated it up and kind of molded it to the sole a little bit, trimmed it. So that one's ready to go. Okay, now I got a trim. On to the last thing. This one we got kind of started. Jake was showing me off camera how to get the process going. Again, I'm gonna be doing this one. There's some areas that still need some work. We got some nails down in place and the board. We started in the back and then worked our way up to the front, did the sides, 
This part was a little tricky just because of the material that we used. This part is in the collar area of a Jordan 1. Typically, this new bug material isn't very flexible, plus it's backed with some really thick material, so stretching it was really tough, but we made it work. We added some more nails on the side, but we still need more to go. While I do that, he's gonna be working on the left shoe. Learned some good lessons today. Basically learned how to last a shoe. Looks good. Now, really it's gonna be our first time seeing if this sole fits. Yeah. We got this eighth Jordan 1 sole. Luckily I used this from an old project. It didn't fit. Hopefully it fits on this one. Yeah. Let's see. Dude, that looks good. That's a shoe. Dude, and there's no like spots showing. No, it looks like it's a nice little fit. Yeah. Fitment looks great. I also went in with the pen, outlined the entire upper so I know exactly where to place the glue. But before we do that, I gotta grab the Dremel and do some prep work. We're gonna roughen up the areas, apply some glue on both the outsole and the upper. We'll stick it together and we'll have a shoe. It's a new day guys, we let the shoe fully dry, the glue is good to go. We also gave it a lot of time to let the upper fully form around the last. Now it's time to remove the last using, what's this, what's this called? Uh, lasting pole? Lasting post. Lasting post, let's take care of that. If I remember correctly, push up, slide off. That's it. Oh, we should probably undo the laces. Good call. <laughs> We gotta shoot, Dank. It held its shape really well. It took form. So we got yours finished. It's off the last, off camera. We got mine off the last as well. Looks good, man. These contrasts are really nice together. It really does. It's one of those things that how, how could some something so different be a pair, but it worked. At the end, we're gonna have to count how many pairs are in these shoes. We still gotta move on to the stencils. That's kind of what I'm working on next. We gotta take care of the back tabs and the tongues. We created a logo that incorporates both Texas and Arizona. We're gonna put that logo on the back and the front, but first we gotta print some stencils. So we're ready to start laying down some paint. We have our stencils here. We have a cactus to represent Arizona, wearing a cowboy hat to represent Texas. We have AZ to TX on either side. This will end up going on the back tab of each of the shoes. And then we'll also have on the pair that Vic made, we'll put an AZ. The pair that I made, we'll put a TX on the tongue. Uh, so let's start laying down these stencils. Uh, Angelus is kind of the, well, at least Angelus Direct is the kind of one-stop shop for our, like customization needs. So you can get your brushes, you can get your airbrushes and paints. You can get all your little solutions, you know, to make the, the paint dull or thin or whatever, make it work better through the airbrush. There's so many colors, and so many different variants of their paint with the glitter lights and all that and all the metallics. Uh, there's a lot of cool things you can do when mixing these paints. But yeah, Angelus has been a big part of our, our business for many years and I can't see myself ever using a different kind of paint. Jake is all done painting the right shoe. He's taking a quick break. While he was doing that, I was working on the left shoe. I started adding the stitching all around the sole. I'm almost done. I'm gonna show you guys the process real quick. On the inside, I have a piece of thread, and on the outside, I have a separate piece of thread. The one on the outside, I aged real quick using some coffee to match the aged sole. For this step, I've been using the sewing arm. Let's finish it up so we could go ahead and pick out our insoles and lace it up.
We're basically done, bro. Painting's done, stitching is good to go. I gotta say, you did a good job with the painting. Appreciate it's it. It's your job, man. Yeah, I did it freehand completely. Um, no stencils required. That's pretty sick, man. So now we're onto some details. We got laces and insoles. We already off camera, went through a bunch of laces. We had a bunch of different options. Ultimately, we wanted to go with some Nike SB oval laces. This is from an old Nike SB C crystal. These over here, dang, didn't like the decision. These are off my old pair of Nike SB Bucks. I did a restoration on those. I like the yellow on these, so I pulled the laces off. These Air Maxes are from an Air Max One. I don't exactly remember the name, but it's a cool pair of insoles. Basically, all we gotta do, slide them in and lace them up. Let's do it. Also, I wanna say I did use my strength to punch, punch the holes. I know, he called me a well. wuss. He called me a wuss <laughs> with the P. <pee. laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, we're finally done. The shoes are fully laced up. I gotta say, Jay, this is one of the funnest projects I've ever done. Just because there was no formula, we weren't trying to be perfect with this project. We had free range to do whatever we wanted, and this was just a cool experience just working with you, dude, to begin with. But before we get into that, I do want to talk about the shoes. As I mentioned earlier, we do want to count how many different shoes we incorporated to these different sneakers. I'll let you count yours, I'll count mine. At the end, we'll tally it all up. Okay, counting insoles and sole, 17, 18, 19. Yeah, I got 18. With insoles and soles? Insole, exactly. Yeah, I would have figured yours would have more. One, two, three, yep. four, yep. five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, and I already counted these two. I mean, this is the blue. 19. Yeah. And then 20 with the sole. And insole? Insole is already counted. Okay. And then this plastic piece, if you want to count it inside. Yeah. So 20. 39 different pairs of shoes to re recreate. The inspiration behind the shoe, as far as like where the parts go, come with just a feeling like when you when you lay something down, go like, hey, that looks cool here. Hey, that looks cool here. If it doesn't look right, then we move it away. But yeah, that's, it's a weird kind of, um, um, reasoning behind it. It's literally like we had a pile of stuff here and we brought it all together and like what looked cool next to next to something else as we laid it out is how we ended up designing the shoe. And at the same time for me personally since this was my first time doing this type of project I had to think outside the box. Totally. I'll learn everything you know. Yeah. You're not gonna place a toe box where the toe box goes. Yeah. You, know, you gotta think of. You, you gotta can. Be different. You can. You, you can. Like for instance, areas. like we, we. This is a toe box from a size 14. And that's a panel from a Jordan 3 that goes in the back. So yeah. some parts we did keep original. You know, it just made sense. Other parts, though, for the most part. Like we have a toe box on the back here. Exactly. You know. You have a. You have a uh, a wings panel from a Jordan 1. Usually that part goes up here, we have it yeah. in the very front, you know, so we had to just think outside the box with this whole project. It was tricky, but dude, again, it was really, really fun. I really want to do this again in the future. I'm going to have to have you send me a big ass box again. Okay, we got plenty. I know you do. <laughs> I thought I had cool parts, but after seeing your stuff, nah, yeah, the water. it's like 15 years worth of, you know, yeah. hoarding. 100%. <laughs> Recycled project. Yeah, they're gonna break some necks out there for sure. All right, enough about the shoes, man. I gotta say, it was a huge honor having you here. I learned so much from you, bro. Again, I've been following you for years, since like 2013. So to have you here in my studio, work with you right next to each other, by far one of the coolest experiences. Dude, it's been a pleasure, for sure. Definitely. Mine, bro. Thank you. Hope you guys enjoy this video. It's Vic Almighty. Jake, you can see me at JW Dancliffs, JW D-A-N-K-L-E-F-S. We'll spot that underneath. Yeah, <laughs> it's a long one. Uh, or just Google Dank & Co. or Dank Customs, Dank Shoes, whatever. You'll find me on Google. If you whatever. guys want to see some of the cleanest work, this is where I get some of my inspiration, check out his stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. This is Vic Almighty, Dank Customs. Catch you guys next time.